Hold on, I gotta do something real quick.
Kind of. Patterns are getting astonishingly small. Luna! Chris! Kronos is destined to crumble! Should I perish here? <laughs> Braun alone can't win all wars. Likewise, my fascist assailant. I'll be observing your lot from on high. Repudiation to you! Honor to Kronos! Adele. Thanks a lot. It didn't back down at all. I did all I could. Me and Relia. Yeah. You prevailed. Promise you will. Look after my baby sister. I certainly do. Relia deserves a good life. A caring, maybe mentoring dad. Like the real was when I was young. Really, uh, I'm so sorry. What's more, I should thank you. My wish was answered due to your. Grow up and be the joyous girl I couldn't. Faria, no. And she's gone. Don't be so sad. Since I'll be with you in your heart. I gotta be honest, some of this voice acting kind of sucks. Captain's Log. Space date, November 7, 537. Our mission in the Fate Creed system has concluded. With the death of its leader, General Alma, the rebellion collapsed in upon itself. The coup d'etat ended in abject failure. The Kronos government was able to regain its authority. Days later, President Mutal declared that Kronos would join the Pan Galactic Federation, thus swelling our ranks and leaving one fewer enemy. I have a feeling, however, that there will be repercussions from this incident that last for quite some time. In my opinion, it is now abundantly clear that the Federation is at a major crossroads. It is only a matter of time, I assume, before we must re-evaluate the form we wish the Federation to henceforth take. Kronos was officially inducted into the Pan-Galactic Federation, and while the Kronos incident that engendered the Alliance was certainly noteworthy, it was not the only seminal event of Space Day 537. The year also became known for various progressive reforms, which would serve as defining points of Federation policy for years to come. Faecreed's fate regarding the Federation was officially decided today. Because the planet is not sufficiently civilized, it will not be recognized as a legitimate member of the Federation. As we influence the planet to a great extent, though, it was designated a protectorate. 
I plan to ask command to appoint Victor the Inspector General of Fake Creek. I cannot imagine there is anyone else in the galaxy better suited to the job than him. Now that I mention one fake reading, I should probably record what happened to the rest. Everyone involved in the incident immigrated to Earth. After all they'd experienced of the outside world, we couldn't simply let them return to an underdeveloped planet. Besides, they unanimously decided to come of their own accord, which is what I was hoping for anyway. Miki's currently studying her heart out to become a science officer. According to Anne, she's got a real knack for this sort of thing. Already understanding the basics of symbology doesn't hurt either. If there's anything that holds her back, though, it's reading and writing. Mm -hmm. You can't be too hard on her, as she didn't grow up with the Terran syllabary. But she still has a long road ahead of her. Victor was able to enlist in the Federation's military. And based upon his distinguished record, he was appointed as an instructor. Considering he's a citizen of an underdeveloped planet, this is a historic accomplishment for him. Personally, I'd like to see Command put him in charge of overseeing his home planet, but the decision ultimately rests with him. Thanks in part to an endorsement from Dr. Krupp, Fiore was accepted as a researcher in the newly built Symbological Genetics Laboratory on Moonbase. I say accepted, but the whole facility was basically established for her sake. Her knowledge surpasses even our own scientists in some areas, so I assume they're more than happy to take advantage of her genius. There's no way they won't make at least a few breakthroughs with her working on their team. All is quiet on the Anne front as she continues to work as a science officer aboard the Charles D. Gold. Her looks are what sealed the deal for me when hiring her. But I'll be damned if she isn't one capable science officer. Once I'm finally given my new assignment, I won't hesitate to bring her along. As for me, the myriad and valiant deeds I performed in quelling the Kronos Rebellion earned me a promotion. Nothing's official yet, but word around the water cooler is that I'll become an admiral. To think, me, with my own fleet. What's more, the ship they'll assign me won't be any ordinary one. It'll supposedly be equipped with some rather snazzy technology of an experimental and gravitic warp kind. I guess this goes to show, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few rules. So you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. Nevertheless, I think that's it. That will start ocean integrity and faithlessness. What was it, man? I'm not gonna play the, the credits because I don't know what kind, of, what kind of copyright it's gonna get. Fidel's now diligently studying to become an officer in the Federation's military. Okay. Truth be told, we'd already accept him as a foot soldier, but he says he won't settle for anything less than being a crewman on a battleship. Now, I'm not one to balk at lending my friends a hand. But this is a battle he needs to fight on his own. Prove that I was right to believe in you and get your butt up here, Fidel. Hey there. Your snack's ready. Excellent. Either when this is done. You'll burn out studying like that. Miki, you barely try at all. I bet you'll never transcend Emerson Oran like that. What about just being your wife? What did you say? Uh, nothing. Uh. Nothing important. I said we should both try our hardest. Yeah, let's. Great. Finished. I'll take that snack now. That was it. Willing to bet anything they ended up getting married down the line. I wouldn't put it past them. Game. Surprisingly short. Seeing your adventures in the internal sphere and load your data you saved after arriving at the. Little 
turn to the entrance of the parallel dimension and then transport. Post go. So there's post game gameplay. So there's post gameplay. Let's take a quick look at that. As far as I'm concerned, I beat the story already. The story was surprisingly short. Um, I don't even remember the previous Star Ocean game having a short story like that. ending uh kind of wish they would have for whatever reason i thought i thought there would have been like some other boss after general alma for whatever reason it just, it just didn't rub off as like the final boss but i guess they wanted you to do this post gameplay for whatever you know as like you know but they didn't want to keep the storyline long but whatever the case is man that's that's it that's the story hope you guys enjoyed it um i did I hate those damn ships, but nevertheless, it was a cool, cool story. Thank you guys for watching. Peace, and I'm out.